All right, it's that time again. I got a show this weekend and I wanna make a track that I can play out to the people on the rooftop in Hollywood. It's gonna be kind of vibing. I'm not gonna be doing a live set, so I need to make a DJ track. So take me back to my roots. And I brought out the heavy hitters, of course, the things I work the fastest on. And one very special synth, the Ultra Nova. This has literally never been seen. I don't think I've ever brought this out on my channel before, but it's one of my all time favorite synths. I had one while I was working at Novation and long story short, it got stolen, but I found one used at GC a couple of years ago, ended up getting that, came with a sticker, left it on there. I remember when synths used to come with a huge graphic back lit display that you could barely read. Remember those days, the good old days? Anyway, this thing is sick. I mean, one of the most underrated synths, I would say. How, how sick is that? All the presets on here are crazy. And it does so much stuff. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. We'll get to that in a sec. Let's get some typical drums down. I got nothing here. Literally, we're running on empty. But nothing we can't do about that. So we'll say... Uh, that's cool. I'll take these two down. So we'll say uh, velocity down. And I'll also take these down too. That's cool. This is a ride, but I need this to be an open hat. All right, that works. We'll do this typical. Awesome, turn that up, less reverb. It's funny, so what I end up doing on the Digitact a ton is copying a pattern that I previously made just so it saves all the drums. It's kind of like a, a hack to do the drum kit thing because uh, there's no kits on here. So I just kind of keep working with the same kit, but then a lot of my tracks end up sounding very cohesive, which is nice because sometimes when working in a DAW and you start from complete blank every time, all your tracks sound completely different. So this kind of reminds me of my old way of doing things on the MPC. So like, here's this, but like you saw, I'm dealing with old preset sounds and maybe my tuning is different, right? But I'm gonna go down to minus three. This is usually a rock, my open hats. Do I want to put the clap in right now? Uh, I'll put it, but way in the back. We'll turn it almost all the way down. Just so that there's something there to kind of keep it going, right? This thing's kind of cool. So we can do slicing on this. Create random locks. And we turn this way down. Awesome, we'll push this over. Again, nice and quiet. We'll keep it simple. I don't want to get too busy with the drums now, but we got the the vibe going, the groove. Got some swing pump in. We're at 124. All right, let's jump on to the Ultra Nova. Let's find a decent patch here. Look at that house organ. Ah. Oh, this I need to clap up. I promise you I'm not gonna live on this, but this is just so funny. Right, I think the Ultra Nova came out at the perfect cusp of trying to be future, but then was stuck with a bunch of these kind of cheesy 90s, 2000 sounds, but some of them are really, really good. And it reminds me a lot of my third wave, which is insanely expensive, but this just does this weird wave table-y wannabe analog stuff. And it's got like touch, I swear this is not a sponsored video by Novation. And full disclosure, I work at Electron. That's my day job. I just use this stuff to make music at night. So this ain't sponsored by anybody. But anyway, I'm getting way too out of myself about how much I like this thing. <laughs> I ended up making it back onto the seventh gate preset that I really like. And I'm gonna try playing this uh, higher and then pitching it down on the Octatrack to kind of give it some texture, who knows what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna just set this with uh, one time record length, that's fine. All right, cool, let's go ahead and hit record. I'll grab this chord in. That should be enough. Let's get way up in there. Awesome, now we'll go down to chromatic mode. I'm 
worried that this sound might be a little too big in the mix, but we'll give it a shot. We can always kind of tune it up a little bit with the Octatrack filters. Okay, now it's gonna be 32 steps. Here we go. So on the Octatrack, we have our filter here. I'm gonna turn our bass up. Take out a lot of the low end. resonance to only go to low pass, we'll set the low pass to 24. Awesome, turn our track level down. Let's go to our LFO and we'll send this to the filter cutoff. And you can see that all three steps here are on the first page, but technically this step needs to be here. And I'm gonna make sure that that's right on the one so our LFO hits properly. Same with this, we'll put it right on the one. And this comes a little late, that's fine. It's almost as if it wants to be here. Let's see how that works. Let's see if it kills the vibe. No, that actually works. And it locks in that LFO rhythmic thing I was trying to do a little better. But we'll bring it down. Okay, track two, I have its record buffer set to one record length of 64. Let's hop back on the Ultra Nova, find another little preset. You know what's funny? I don't even know what notes I'm playing. I'm playing C and then uh, what, five up? Oh yeah, okay, so this is C major. Or maybe C minor, it's C minor. like this. Let's go ahead and grab this in. Okay, cool. Now we'll drop that step in here. It's already assigned to its own buffer. Awesome. We'll say a bass, a little higher. Way up there, and then we'll give it a little bit of a, we'll do dark reverb. delay. All right, on to the next sound. Ooh, I guess I could use a bass line. Let's see. Actually, you know what we'll do for this one instead? This will be easy, watch this. We'll take this, I'm gonna go ahead and clear our filter track out. We'll look at our audio editor and you can see all our notes are in there. I just want to take that first note. So I'm just going to take our end position. We'll zoom in, grab the start. There it is. Now I'm just going to play it. In. Uh, and that was up here. And same thing, kind of what I was doing on the Ultra Nova. I'm going to go ahead and grab our bass, uh, our filter with low pass, cue only to that, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of texture. So we'll do that. That's a little too much. We'll say. Awesome, let's try that. Cool, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, quantize this one. Awesome, you can hear I had a couple of double triggers in there because I overplayed them. Sweet, now let me just do something for fun. We'll grab this, move that up. Just kind of see where we're at, right? Okay, cool, so this little think can kind of go away. It's a little too prominent for my taste. Once everything opened up and it came back, it was kind of overpowering. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit and we'll push it even further back in the mix by raising the high pass. Yo, these drums are bumping. You know what it is? It's that weird little break I have in there because without that, this is pretty cool, but I just add some weird little texture in there, right? And 
we got the compressor kind of pump in, nothing too crazy. But again, we'll kind of leave some of this for a little later. Actually, we'll probably leave this for the DAW. It is kind of bumping though. Bumping. That's kind of tight. Bumping. Yo, that's it. That's it. I need a, I need a, a cable. I got them right here. Let's grab it, let's grab it. Bump in. We'll just go uh, check, check, check. Awesome, there it is. So on four, I'll say CD32. Okay, cool. Oh, let's just say, um, just C. Bump in. Bump in. Now let's put that in, see what that does. Bump in. There it is. Bump in. Why did I sound so dweebish? Bump in. Let's do something cooler. Bump in. Bump in. Yeah, why not? That's fine. Bump in. We'll do this. Delay. Bump in, bump in. And then I'll also say time stretch. Bump in, bump in, bump in. Lower the voice. Pitch. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go ahead and save this recording. We'll call it bumping. Let me just turn this off real quick. Okay, I think I thought of better lyrics. Time to groove, time to vibe. Right? Time to groove. Let's see, let's see. Where is it at? Time to groove. Time to vibe. Okay, so you're probably like, whoa, what's going on here? There it is, awesome. So that's it. But what I'm gonna do is turn on our uh, trig condition and just say play one out of every two times. So this 32 step pattern turns into a 64 step pattern. Sure, could have extended the pages, but whatever. That's where my brain went, let's do it. And the delay's too loud. Now I don't like the pitch down so much. Time to vibe. Time to vibe. That's kind of tight. Time to vibe. Let's do a more um, telephone effect. There it is. Ooh. I know I'm not vibing this hard to my own voice, but damn. Get a little ride in here. This is what I love doing, psyching myself out. I'm gonna turn the track level down, play it back. All right, let me find the ride real quick. All right, cool. Track level down, bam, bam. We'll grab these, trigger. Low velocity, slowly raise it up. There it is. We need some sort of like little lead line in here. Let me grab this sample. Let me do some uh, sample management real quick. I need to save these samples before I accidentally record one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. Time to groove. BRB. I feel like I need some string sample or something in here. Okay, let's see. This actually kind of works. That's actually it right there. Let's see if we can grab it. Yo, there's gonna be something sick in here. 
Oh, yes, please. You know what just happened? So there's a lot of movement in this. Oh, this is going to be sick. Actually, I hope it's going to be sick. There's a lot of movement in this string thing I grabbed off of the Ultranova, right? Check this out. What I'm going to do, we're going to... How did I already know? I wanted to go to slices. There's all this movement in here, and I want to actually create a slice grid of... We'll do 16 slices. Sure. Now, what I'm going to do is four steps here, another four steps here, and we're going to create a... Uh, Random locks. Now, now that's a new rhythm in itself. Or I can do something trippy, like, right, copy this, paste it here. And then random locks. Okay, I like the first page, right here. Copy, paste onto the second page. There it is. Awesome. Now we'll go to Dark Reverb, Send. Amp, a little bit of attack. Kinda works. Kinda cheesy. You let me know down below. Also, earlier I said that we were in this key of C minor, right? Which is here but that's wrong because these chords are, it's going basically from a C uh, minor nine to a G minor nine. And in here, these notes technically do not live within that C major scale, right? This note here, the A isn't in the C minor scale. So what scale are we in? Who knows, that's the end of my knowledge. <laughs> but we're not in C minor, I can tell you that much. Uh, this lead line doesn't kind of work. I mean, where are we at? We're at this kind of, uh, I always leave this thing on. We're at this weird crossroads, right? Where we need another, Pattern, something else to happen. All right, I'll copy this. We'll go to pattern three. And we'll take a couple things out. Our main chord sample, get rid of that. And can this live on, right? I think this also needs to go. This needs to go. Now, looking back at our chords, which were... Okay, okay. I know I just said we weren't in C major, but... Now, I'm gonna do something a little trippy. We're gonna to go to our parts, and I'm gonna copy our parts and paste it onto part two. This pattern's now gonna live in part two. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna change up some of the filter settings, but I don't want that to affect the other patterns. Okay, this is cool. I'm open to this. Now our baseline, I'm gonna copy our baseline just to be safe, we'll clear it out. Deep as a mother. That's kind of cool. Might be a little too deep, but let's try it. Awesome. Quantize that. 
Now, because we're in a new part, I can mess this up and not worry. Boom, just like that, we're back, baby. How does this work going back? Okay, this one's a little sleepy, right? So let's see how, how do we get to that next part. We of course take all this out. And then we grab these out. Take this out. This is almost as if it builds up to this point here. Because going back to here. Yes, boom, we made it. Okay, now to get all of this into the laptop. And maybe you saw my last video on me judging the differences between the Apollo and the RME. Long story short, sent the RME back, ordered an RME. And it ain't gonna be here till the end of the month. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna get all this into the DAW, most likely over bridge. But uh, yeah, one sec. Track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, correspond with what was on here. And you can see that I got a couple tracks already kind of going. Um, let's zoom in and make sure that we fix any potential latency issues. Uh, actually, wow, that's pretty spot on. Let me just go ahead and grab this very beginning here. I'm gonna hold down Command, Shift, and Delete. And that's gonna erase that moment in time for everything. So let's see where our uh, clap lands. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Sweet. So the reason I'm doing that is just to delete it from the very beginning. That way the rest of these recordings, which were all recorded with the same amount of latency should technically fall on because the entire timeline has shifted forward. And all of these are working off essentially the same amount of latency that was being caused to cause that very first kick, or not the first kick, but all the other kicks to kind of fall off. I hope that makes sense. That way you don't have to go through each clip and uh, organize it and chop it up. Now I just need to make a couple other tracks for all these little uh, things. This will be perk. So we got all this, we can get rid of all of this here. And essentially we could start here on 33, but what I'm gonna do is just select this space here and hit command I for insert time and I want to start on the one. So how we're gonna do this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, bam, hit Command E, drag this over while holding down Option, and that's gonna allow us to copy this. Okay, crazy, right? We got everything going on here. Um, all this stuff needs to be duplicated, and then I believe track eight. You know what, I might as well just go ahead and do all this so I don't drive myself nuts later. One sec, ride. Okay, now we're back. I'm gonna move our ride down here and I'm gonna close that track and turn it off. There's nothing on that track. So um, I'm gonna leave that just in case I wanna add something later on the Digitact, which I often do. But now let's play back. Okay, this is fine. How are we gonna build up to get to 33, bar marker 33? This is usually where I start breaking things down, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just duplicate this, holding down Command D, just pressing that, we'll duplicate this track across. And the way I like to think of this is I'm gathering my material, my marble, and then I'm gonna chisel my work of art or masterpiece, whatever, um, out of this. So now I got this block of material to work with, right? So I can say, all right, I don't really want filtering open stuff here yet, right? I don't need the ride here. I'm just chiseling different things out. And what I'm doing is I'm selecting them and I'm pressing zero. This will deactivate the clip, not delete it. Because what's cool about this is I can go and select some like really random part, hit zero again, and just bring that part in. So let's see where we're at here. Okay, this is cool. I can already hear that I need a crash. So I'm gonna say crash. Sure, we'll just take that one, that's fine. And I'm gonna do what I always do. We'll zoom in here. Let me get rid of this. 
I'll make this a little shorter, maybe here. Turn down its volume, minus 20. Awesome, delay. And then I'm gonna set our delay to a fourth. They're tied up. Tight, I love it. And it's way too loud, so we'll bring it down even lower. This is just like, boom, intro, let's go. And I can even do it again here, but I already know that that's gonna get cheesy. Right now, as I'm making this song, if I'm being kind of mindful about it, I'm amped up, I'm excited. I wanna start doing a lot, but I've caught myself doing this a million times. I'll get really excited, add a bunch of stuff, and then listen to it like the next day and be like, dude, I was on a good one. There's way too much going on. So I know already I'm not gonna do that, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go and paste it here, which I believe is eight bars. Yeah, that is. Um, so let's take it back to the top. And here's the other thing. I'm making tracks for DJing, right? There's really long intros. This is just kind of what it does. Whoa, something disappeared. Ah, good catch. Ah, our break just came in. So that's actually kind of cool. And the ride came in. I don't think I need the ride at all this entire time. Now, I'm gonna say on our filter, we're gonna type in auto filter. I'm gonna turn the resonance up a little bit and automate. We are gonna look in at this little section here. And the way I did that, in case you're curious, is another fun tip. Um, if you ever select something, hit Z and then hit Z again, it'll really zoom into what you've selected. And another pro tip, turn this off, which is gonna be your like keyboard, keyboard. Uh, it's annoying and it turns off like more than half of, or almost, it turns off a ton of shortcuts that are really handy. All right, so now we're here, auto filter. I'm gonna hit B to go to our pencil tool, drop this down, grab this dot, and I'm just gonna write it all the way out. Let's go here, put a tiny slight curve in there to pretend I actually turn this knob up. Let's bring it up a little bit. Awesome. We'll do this and we'll take our closed hat. We'll leave it in. We'll take the kick out here. Take this out. And we'll grab the brake, take that part out. Okay, cool. So this filtering down section, I accidentally grabbed it from another spot and you can hear that the filtering down here actually starts to happen. And I don't want that, but I do like it here. So I just copy pasted this here, which I just did. So we can hear this fully open. And then the filtering down, which is what the Octatrack did for me happens next. And then here I'm gonna add a utility. And this way I can automate the volume. And this is a fun one to do. I like automating volume using utility. That way I'm not messing around with the mix levels because later on when I'm trying to mix the track and if there's automation, it's really annoying to go back and forth and try to fix. Awesome, I like this. Then we can go into a groove with the filter down. Awesome, and then let's say we grab this little section here, copy that, paste it here, get rid of track five. Okay, filtering down. Whoops, I need filter down. That's gonna be uh, confusing. Ah, baseline, we need that bass. Um, oh, and time to groove would be cool here. Time to groove can come in during this breakdown where we're missing the, the kick at the first half, and then the second half, this can come in. And you can hear that I accidentally recorded a little bit of the beginning, that's okay. I'll just grab this section here, bring this in like that. Okay, a lot happens here. We'll do this bring this out because I'm saying time to groove and time to vibe. Let's just bring it in low key. That's cool. Okay, this clap needs help. Let's do a soft limit here. Uh,
That's cool. And then I'm also going to do a reverb. Oh, not high reverb. Okay, cool, that works, and we need the baseline still, I completely forgot. All right, baseline one is right here. Cool, that's dope, but it's really loud, right? You can see here it's 12. Uh, you might have seen this video Maybe you haven't, but it's this video here where I talk about quickly mixing tracks in like 20 minutes. I'm about to do that right now. I don't want you to sit through all that, but if you're curious about that, check that video out. It's a very valuable for times like these where you're on a bit of a time crunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little mix down of this BRB. All right, we got the mix down, check it out. Feeling a little more open, a little more balanced, right? And in case you're wondering why I'm on these headphones for the first time in forever, my TMA's battery died, very rare. Um, but I will say, that's why I'm back on this cable, like a Neanderthal, but these headphones, these are the Rad Zeros by Ross and Audio Design. Insanely good headphones, insanely expensive, but they really made me appreciate why certain things are extremely expensive. I got a link to them down below in case you're trying to blow a bunch of money. But we're here. Now we need to do um, some compressor stuff to kind of side chain this, right? And I'm kind of mixing as I go, right? We got to the main drop, but I want to kind of feel the vibe as we're going. So I'm gonna grab our compressor, we'll put it on our filter, turn that down, side chain, audio input from, we'll do the kick, bring this down. And I'll set this to about 10. So now if we just listen to this, it's really starting to pump it without it. Right, we can get crazy. But I don't like getting that crazy. It's a little too cheese ball for me. That's pretty good there. Now if we listen to the bass line, throw this on the bass as well. A little bit of look ahead. You can hear that there's a pop actually in the bass line. Is that the bass line? Let's see. Ah, it's our filtering down. Okay, cool, that's me. Uh, we'll go in here and we'll just do a little crossfade. That's fine. There it is, cool. Yeah, that's pumping, awesome. We'll duplicate this section. I just hit Command, Shift, and D. And we'll do that a couple times. What else can we bring in? Oh, look at me. I'm getting a little too carried away with this crash. Uh, we'll get this out of here. You know, we'll get all of these out of here. So we're gonna let this ride out for eight bars. That's cool. And then we'll bring in the break for another eight bars. Maybe we can bring in the ride instead. Yeah, the ride's really powerful. All right, we'll duplicate that again, take the kick out. This is cool, but I feel like now we need to really get ready to do something wild and move into section two, which is gonna be the um, the big like breakdown of the next um, f chord parts, chord two, chord opening, chords two open, which is this whole section. Or does it start with the open chords first? Let's see. Of course there's gonna be more elements, but. That might actually be kind of cool to just go into this like quick little break. Grab this, bam, open that up, open that up. And then, uh, then bam, bass line two right here in full effect. Yeah, that's it. And then we'll grab this section here, paste this here, boom. And then we'll bring these in, bam. There it is. So let's see how this feels. It's rough, but you get the idea, let's see. 
Actually, we'll leave this in, and we'll go back to our utility. I accidentally copy pasted this entire thing in the wrong section. So my clap went all wild style on me. My clap became a kick and my kick became a who knows what. All right, let's try that one more time. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's it. Oh boy, we're cooking with oil now. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. more time to grooves, right? We'll leave it at this, just full force. The brake's not even in this part, which is fine. What do I want to happen here? Oh man, this is, a, this is, this is big, right? This is heavy and we're just not even three minutes in. So I need to keep this energy up. See, this is the problem. I'm here, I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, cool. It's going from this section to this section, and we let this ride out, but I'm making all the sections short because I want to get there faster. But when you're playing, you need to take a breather and understand that this, is, this track is probably moving too fast for most DJ's likings. I could be wrong. Um, and that's one of those things you just need to play out and test it against a couple other tracks and feel it. But I might be moving a little too fast. Maybe this breakdown here is a little too short and this breakdown here is a little too short. But one thing I like doing is instead of doing one 16 bar breakdown, I'll do two eight bars. But this is such a big change up here. And I don't know where else to go from here, right into this section. Oh, you know what I can do actually? I could do this totally. So we'll duplicate this whole section again. Look at this and then we'll bring our filter down. Oh yeah, that's gonna feel real nice. We'll do this. We'll drop this down. That's cool. And then I'm gonna grab this crash out of here. And we need a way to go into this. So we're just gonna add a little kick trip real quick. I'm gonna take this one out. We'll move this one over, go to here, here, and there. That should be fine. Okay, this is cool. So now again, similarly to before, we're gonna let this ride out for eight bars. This is a, this is a whole section here. Let me listen to it back from right here. I'll be right back. I don't want to bore you with this entire section, but I think I'm going to end up adding some strings here to kind of drag this part out. We might be able to ride this out until the end of the track because we just need to get right here to five minutes. And at that point, the, if the DJ ain't playing the next track, oh boy, he's probably texting. So let's see. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, it's working. Leaving that baseline open. This is fine. Let people fill this out. And then let's see what happens if I just drop this in here. Just cold turkey on them. Oh man, that's gonna be a splash of cold water. Here, let's see if I can bring that up uh, slowly over this section here. We'll close this out. Let's see what happens if we just drop everything out, except one of these crashes. Oh, 
Okay, yo, I think we're actually working on something pretty decent here. So now that we're here, we can take it back to... Awesome, yeah, yeah, this works, this works. So I'm gonna just copy this entire section, paste it, uh, oh, let me give myself some space. I'm gonna paste it right here. So we're gonna go... Into this. I'm gonna smooth this out, we'll fix it a little bit. Bring in the bass line. And maybe we'll just get rid of this. That's what I'll do. That'll make it a little easier to kind of roll into this. out and then is the break even back in oh man i always do this the break will be used for like the tiniest amount of time what does the break sound like here sounds like trash that's what it sounds like yeah okay we're riding this out Take the closed hat out. Dude, this strings has been this big this entire time and I haven't even touched it. Get out of my way. Come on, brethren. Okay, that works. And now I just need to really uh, kind of feather out the track. So the bass line's gone, that's fine. The bass line of the next track will most likely be playing at this point in time. And again, if the DJ ain't changed the track at this point, pff, get them off their phone. Yeah. Then we're just gonna ride it out. Real simple, simple beat. Cool, I'm down with that. Now I'm gonna add a utility. I know I already have one at the beginning, but ignore that one. I'm gonna go to this one. And I'm gonna just slowly fade this out. And then we're gonna let this ride in here. Awesome, I think that works. I'm gonna listen to this back a couple times, see what it might need. Uh, one second. Cool, there's another little pop here you can hear. I need to fix this whole transition, like more sounds. That's cool. Say crash. Turn tracks. We have this reverb. Yo, the track is vibing. I'm, I'm hearing it in the background. This is cool. I'm it. And we'll just say send a lot to that. And this might even be want to be a little louder, right? So we'll do minus 24. That works ish. It needs to be cleaned up. Right, this is when we're just kneading the dough, pushing it back and forth, back and forth, slowly making it better until we just completely destroy it. Here it is. I love the energy that this has here. I'm super down with this. And I think maybe our chorus can actually come down a little softer, because I come, I have them almost whipping down pretty fast. We'll go from here. That's cool over the eight bars. You know what, let's get this out of here. Let's just let it live. Yo, 
Yo, you know what we'll do? We'll add more energy here, but we're gonna add up hat numero dos. So let's find a hat. Maybe this is it here. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and grab this a bunch of times. I'll get this out of here. I just need to add a little bit more energy to kind of push it through this final stretch into the next little breakdown, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is just gonna layer some sounds and keep the up hat going a little harder. So this is it here. That's cool, we'll send to the reverb. Actually, we won't because that reverb is really long. I don't want to do that just yet. We'll say our own reverb here. And to help it kind of sit in the mix a little better, what I'm gonna do, again, from that last mixing video, we're gonna turn it decay pretty low, or wet all the way up. We don't want it to diffuse anything. A little bit of pre-delay. So without it, dead center, super harsh. This really opens it up in the back. So again, here it is. Yep, and we can just bring the volume up a little bit. And then a little. There we go. Okay, cool, final stretch. I think this is it. We're gonna go ahead and go to our master track. We'll say multi-band dynamics. And actually we'll do the Ricky T secret sauce. Drop that on there. Uh, you know what, check that last video. It's all in there. Push the highs up a little bit. Push the mids up a little bit. We want a little more bass. up a little bit. All this is before the limiter. Yo, I'm happy with this. I think this is it. I might do a couple little more tweaks here and there, add a couple more kick trips and all that stuff, but I'm gonna be playing this at the club. And uh, if you want to support by the full track, I got a link to it down below to my band camp. And uh, yeah, check the Instagram if you want to see if people dance to it or not. We'll see. I'm already grooving to it, so I think that's a good sign. Until next week, my friend, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace, and I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you.